Welcome to the Washington Week Extra. I'm Yamish Alsandor. This week, there were a number of startling headlines from overseas. Shinzo Abe, the former longest serving prime minister of Japan, was assassinated. And plagued by scandal, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson resigned from office. And the fate of Brittany Griner, the WNBA star imprisoned in Russia, remains uncertain. She pleaded guilty to drug charges there and says she is desperate to come home. All these events sent shockwaves across the globe, and the implications for the U.S. are vast. Joining me tonight to discuss this and more, Jeff Zeleny, Chief National Affairs Correspondent for CNN, and Laura Barone Lopez, White House Correspondent for PBS NewsHour. Well, thank you, both of you, for being here. Jeff, I'm going to start with you. I mean, this is just such heartbreaking news. Um, the video of Shinzo Abe being shot, just it, it just broke my heart. I wonder what you can talk, how you can sort of just describe his legacy for people, especially as it relates to the U.S. and Japan relationships. Certainly just devastating and heartbreaking news. The longest serving prime minister uh, with really a deep relationship with uh, uh, three American presidents and four, uh, if you count President Biden, of course, because he had a long uh, relationship with him when he was vice president. But look, those horrifying images, uh, he was giving a political speech in a country where violence, certainly gun violence, does not happen. Uh, so I think that, uh, you know, as all of the condolences were pouring in from around the globe, one thing I was struck by, just thinking back to his, uh, his relationship with uh, former President George W. Bush during his uh, first uh, a stint as prime minister back in 06 for just a year or so, but then a much deeper relationship with uh, President Obama um, in the second term of the Obama administration and into President Trump. And I just recall thinking, I don't believe there is a world leader who made as uh, perhaps smooth or deft as a, a pivot between the, the one president, President Obama, to President Trump. Uh, he was the first world leader uh, to visit the, the uh, Trump uh, Tower after the election in 2016, president-elect uh, Trump. He took him a gift of a gold-plated golf club, and that really started a very good relationship. Of course, uh, Japan was very keen. Shinzo Abe was very keen on having that strong relationship with the United States, of course. And uh, regardless of who the president was, regardless of the politics specifically or personalities, he made uh, it work. So I think just the seamless effort from one leader to another, particularly uh, from Obama to the uh, Trump administration, will certainly go down in history as, uh, as a world leader who was, he was doing it for Japan. He was doing it for the Japanese economy, of course, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, China. And he was certainly an incredibly skilled prime minister. And an incredible legacy that he leaves behind. Um, Laura, Jeff also talked about the fact that gun violence in Japan is just so rare. Uh, this statistic was shocking. Just one person, one person was killed by gun violence in Japan in 2021. With President Biden and White House officials, I wonder what they're saying about Shinzo Abe's death, but also about sort of what this means in contrast to sort of the gun violence that we're seeing in the United States, maybe they're making that, that connection. The pr President Biden made that connection today, saying compared to the number of, you know, the hundreds to thousands of gun deaths that occur in America on a yearly basis, he said that when he addressed um, uh, Abe's assassination today, he drew that comparison because, of course, the president is, again, as we talked, we've talked about, under pressure from Democrats to be doing more and to also be very forceful in his rhetoric about the gun violence epidemic in America. He also talked about, you know, he just put out statements later this evening, the president did, talking about how transformative Abe's uh, legacy was. He also said that he w was, um, that he believed that the Japanese democracy would remain strong and that he did not think that the assassination would have any impact on the U.S.-Japan alliance. Um, the other thing that, of course, just rocked um, sort of the, the headlines this, this week from overseas were that Prime Minister Boris Johnson, Jeff, uh, resigned here. Um, it was a stormy three-year tenure. His political career, career was um, defied gravity, some people said, much like President Trump's before him. What does, he, what does Boris Johnson stepping down mean for the United States, but also the world stage? Because I heard some interesting reporting about Ukraine and what that might mean there. Well, look, I mean, Boris Johnson really had been living on borrowed time, one scandal after another, not policy-focused, just on personal scandal. 
and he obfuscated the truth repeatedly and simply lost the support of his own party. He lost the support of his own ministers. So it was not a matter uh, of really a surprise, only perhaps in the timing. Uh, and if you think back, it's perhaps even surprising that he hung on this long. Now the question is, how long will he remain um, in power? And the next elections, uh, uh, it is a wide open field. So that, I think, is the biggest impact in terms of the United States. That is the biggest uh, sort of unknown going forward here. Look, the U.S. always has a special relationship with whoever the British prime minister is, and we almost certainly uh, would expect that to be the uh, case going forward as well. On Ukraine, there is no doubt that Boris Johnson led the charge. He visited there a couple times in person. Um, so it is, uh, you know, and that really helped sort of coalesce the NATO alliance as well. Um, so we do not know if his uh, successor will be as uh, strong on Ukraine. But I think largely this is just a, uh, a scandal that has deep roots in the United Kingdom. And, you know, the world is watching to see who will uh, replace him. That is very much an open question. Certainly the White House, uh, the advisors I spoke to, have virtually no idea who the next leader will be um, or ex um, exactly when that will happen here. So um, I think in the end, you know, there will be a strong relationship. There always is. There's a reason, of course, why that is. But uh, in the short term, a deep, deep scandal, you know, really an embarrassing end for Boris Johnson. And as the world is watching what happens after Boris Johnson, the world is also watching what's happening in Russia with Brittany Griner. Right. She could face up to 10 years in prison. She was arrested in February at a Moscow airport after Russian officials said they found cannabis oil in her luggage. The U.S. State Department and the White House say Griner was wrongfully detained. Earlier this week, in a handwritten letter to President Biden, Griner pleaded for his help, saying, quote, I realize you are dealing with so much, but please don't forget about me. She also said that she was terrified that she might stay there forever, Laura. So I know the White House uh, press secretary, she said that President Biden read this letter, that it was very personal to him. What's the latest on what President Biden is trying to do to get Brittany Griner out of Russia? Mm -hmm. And pre President Biden, as well as Vice President Kamala Harris, also spoke to Griner's wife uh, in recent days to try to show that they are making this a top priority because they had come under fire from Griner's wife recently for not communicating with them, for not returning uh, a response to, to Brittany Griner's letter. But the White House uh, officials that I spoke to today said that it is still a very high priority. Yes, uh, there's a lot of, you know, reports about a potential prisoner swap that could ultimately occur, um, you know, in exchange for Griner. And the White House is just really stressing the fact that even as the trial is starting, that they are doing as much as they possibly can do to bring her home. And Jeff, just jump in here because I know CNN's Abby Phillip had that interview with Brittany Griner's wife, which was incredible to hear her t pleading for her wife. What do you make and what are you hearing about this story? Look, now it's in the uh, the arena of uh, the diplomatic arena. Uh, so there, uh, yes, the president has some um, role in this, of course, but uh, prisoner swaps are not that common. And prisoner swaps, we never know, of course, uh, when they're being discussed until after they happen. So. Uh, the White House, of course, is, uh, as Lauren said, paying very close attention. The president, the vice president, um, you know, are uh, personally involved in this. And that has caused some other consternation with other hostages and prisoners as well. So that is a bit of a risk here, I guess, for the president to become so personally involved. But look, given the fact of the relations between the United States and Russia and the the war is still ongoing between Russia and Ukraine, this is probably the worst time that this could be unfolding, that this could be happening here. So uh, it is uh, unclear what the next steps of this are. Um, because of the guilty plea this week, we will see what the, uh, what the sentence is and uh, uh, sort of how it unfolds from there. So it has the attention of the White House, but the White House is not calling the shots in this necessarily. Um, so it's also in the hands of Vladimir Putin, a very... Uh, dicey and dangerous uh, situation and horrible timing. Certainly all of that is too dangerous and dicey.
Um, one last question to you, Jeff. You talked about this. It's the tension with the families of other people who are being held in, in Russia. Uh, the family of former U.S. Marine Paul Whelan, who was imprisoned and has been imprisoned in a Russian labor camp since 2018 on espionage charges, they've been really sort of pressuring President Biden to do more on their case. What do we know more about sort of what's going on behind the scenes as other families are watching the attention that Brittany Griner's getting and the pressure that's, that President Biden is facing to, to sort of navigate all of this? Look, I mean, th I think it, uh, um, you know, sort of came into the uh, public view with the release of Trevor Reed just a few months ago. And that, of course, was something that uh, the Whelan family uh, expressed, uh, of course, happiness and, you know, excitement about. But also, you know, the question, and understandably so, what about our family member? What about our case? So certainly there are many hostages and prisoners held all over the world here. So that, of course, is the challenge uh, for this White House to treat people fairly. But of course, every case is different. The geopolitics are certainly different here. But every family definitely is watching this uh, very carefully because the president, you know, um, has shown a willingness to get involved. Uh, but it's not just his involvement alone that is going to uh, solve this um, you know, a crisis, if you will, for the Griner family and certainly so many others, Americans held hostage and, and imprisoned as well. Yeah, well, all important things. We'll have to keep our eye on all of these stories and we'll have to leave it there tonight. Thank you to Laura and Jeff for joining us and for sharing your reporting. I'm Yamiche Sendor. Good night from Washington.